In this edition of the People's Platform, I have come to the American Corner, a center for academic research and intellectual debate, to interview a man who has been in the political scene for two decades, a human rights lawyer and a politician. Lawyer Usinu Dabo has contested in four presidential elections, but lost in all. In 2011, his party was largely defeated by a PRC party. So, isn't it time for him to pack his political suitcase and say bye to the flagship position of the United Democratic Party? In this program, I will challenge him on two issues. First, why does he think that he can still contest for the position of president despite him being declared ineligible by the Constitution? And second, what makes him to believe that his party has the right policies? to convince government to vote for them in the 2016 presidential elections. Thank you very much. Um, we, we thank you so much for being on the People's Platform. What makes you to believe that um, you can still contest for the position of presidency despite the constitutional caveat? Um, good question. Let me just say that I have never held myself out as being the person who must contest. So the question is predicated on your own premise. Uh, whether constitutional caveat or not constitutional caveat, my uh, uh, eligibility for contested elections on behalf of my party is dependent on the decision of the party select me as a candidate or not. So whether there's any, any uh, legal impediment or not, I do not have a right to be uh, sponsored as a candidate. I make an application to the party. I would make an application to the party. And the party will scrutinize my application. And but, 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 but if you look at section 62, sub 1b of the 1997 constitution, it's saying a person shall not be qualified to become a president if he exceeds 65 years. I which, agree, of course. I, I agree, I agree. That is the constitutional provision. But I'm saying that, that your question is premised on the wrong, wrong footing. Because the constitutional provision is very clear that I have never held myself at that. I have to contest. But you said, if I may um, um, quote during your 66th birthday anniversary, you said, I have never said I am quitting. My standing for election is not a decision in my hands. It is a decision with the party. Absolutely. And the party members are saying, the party members, you know, executive members of the party, youth and female wing, and cross-section of the opposition United Democratic Party have asserted their resolve that Secretary General Usain Dabo will be the party's candidate in 2016 presidential election. In the same you know, venue, that is your 66th birthday anniversary. I agree. Which impliedly means that I, you have acknowledged, you have acknowledged that... I agree, I, I, I agree, I agree that uh, that statement was made by me and uh, uh, my party supporters have held that decision. And uh, of course, we are working towards uh, December 2016, nominations are due in uh, November 2016, and uh, within that period, we are doing everything possible to ensure that whatever impediment is on the way is removed. But let me just let, let me just say this: thing. those impediments are not going to be removed just for Usir Dabo. It will be a provision that is applicable to everyone who attains the age of 65 and above. And again, let me say that uh, our insistence is to ensure that, that that provision is not removed, not that I would, I would have to contest. Because if it's removed, we can have Mr. A, Mr. B, or some other person come in to contest as a, as a candidate. If you recall, I remember in, uh, in one of my interviews, probably after this statement, I said, look, uh, UDP has quite a number of candidates quite capable, not only among men, but also among women. And it should not be a surprise to anybody if UDP 
comes out in the female tongue. So, I mean, uh, you have to, you have to accept one thing that in the Greek, in the, in the, sometimes in politics, you know, you have to have I mean, a mind game. So I, 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 I to, you, you know, you have to, you have, you have to know that, you know. But I have uh, stated uh, that in fact that not will have, you can have a female candidate. And when the focus has been on me, I said, look, I think uh, Gambians and those people who pose that question have been unfair. They ought to have a focus in that democratic party, not on me as an individual. Because apart from anything else, when uh, nature can have its way on me, could that, that mean that the United Democratic Party will not put up a candidate? Does that mean that the United Democratic Party is just tied to Usain Dabo? And uh, if Usain Dabo is incapacitated for any reason, then the United Democratic Party becomes incapacitated. That is not the basis on which our party has been founded. It has not been founded on the belief in an individual, but in the belief in ideas and ideas for which we stand. So I think plainly saying that a female candidate will be coming this 2016 presidential election? I'm talking about the possibility. Okay, and now let's move to the other point. Um, an octogenarian Abba Jobate, a provincial UDP kingpin, said the law which has um, prescribed this age limit um, described it as a nonsense law. Of course, yourself um, described it as an abominable provision. Some might be wondering, where was Lea Usainu Dabo the time this law was put in the constitution and the constitution was taken around the country for people to vote in for the constitution. Very what is your response to that? Uh, let, let, let me say, I mean, when it was put at the referendum, let me say I was not in the Gambia then. So I didn't have the opportunity to vote at the referendum. But Gambians and uh, a lot of other people uh, who probably do not follow me, you know, uh, very meticulously, I mean, have tended to believe that this issue was just raised this year, which is not true. Since 1997, we have picked up provisions in the constitution, and you say that, that they are abominable, that they do not have that they do not have any place in the laws of this country. The banning of the political parties, PPP, NCP, uh, PPP, uh, GPP, GPP, uh, GPP, and the politicians of the First Republic. I mounted campaign in the UK, in Commonwealth, in the Commonwealth Secretariat, at the government, um, Foreign and Commonwealth Office, at the State Department, and every opportunity I had with American ambassadors and representatives of other governments here, EU, we all followed both of these issues, that they are not, or they should not be part of our laws. We, I mean, we've advocated that, look, that, stroke, that provision was there to exclude, the, in fact, I called it, you know, the senior citizen clause that it is there to exclude senior citizens from contesting elections. And I made, in fact, that time I made particular reference to Hassan Musa Kamala, whom I said was a man of impeccable character, a man who had the standing to contest for the presence of this country, and a man who would be a rallying point. And this clause was intended to disqualify people like him, and that it ought not to be there. But people tend to think that, you know, it is this something that we are bringing in. But that, that is absolutely untrue. We have always brought it up. And we have succeeded in ensuring that the ban on political activities was lifted on the, uh, on, on border parties and the, uh, the uh, politicians of the First Republic. And our crusade to ensure that you have a constitution that every government can take advantage of. It's plenty in place. And, uh, this is not a clause for Hussein Dabo. This is a clause that I've said for senior citizens, people who have matured over the years. And, uh, and uh, I say this, uh, it is creeping on other politicians, and other creeper politicians are creeping to meet that provision. So, I mean, the, 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 the advocacy is not for Hussein Dabo. Yeah, what, what some people are also are saying is that as a senior lawyer, uh, they expect you to use the legal means, like to fight a you know, uh, uh, the issue before the Constitutional Court. Yeah, 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 yeah no, no, uh, uh, Has that been done? That, that has not been done, and it has not been done because in my studies, and uh, uh, I think I probably had I mean, one of the best 
professors of constitutional law, uh, T.O. Elias, he subsequently became the president of the International Court of Justice, a very erudite Nigerian. I have never seen or been taught that you can challenge the unconstitutionality of a constitutional provision. You can always challenge the constitutionality of a law because it violates the constitution. But the constitution itself cannot violate itself. So, because of that, I cannot go to the Supreme Court and say, look, I'm going to challenge I mean, this provision. It runs against the constitution when it is part of the constitution. Okay, I think, I think that's a good, that's a fair, um, fair point. Uh, in 2015, um, you wrote on your Facebook timeline that does President Jammeh, in fact, insidiously accept and know what he cannot win a free and fair election, cleanly and has never won free and fair election throughout his presidency? Is this a fair statement? In my view, it is a fair statement, and I stand to be contradicted by anybody. I, I accept the challenge, I mean, debate, challenge from anybody. Yeah, let me show you, we will show you the various incidents that show that these elections have never been free and fair. Can you go to a community when you are in charge of the post, the nation's post, and tell them that, look, no road will come, there will be no road in your area. There will be no development in your area if you do not vote for me. You call that a free election? The national, when, when you are in charge of national coffers, you have been elected as president of the nation and you have to treat every community equally. And you go and threaten them with that. And you fight. I mean, after the, after the by-elections in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in Salem, lower Salem, what did the president say? He said, look, You've seen the people of Kian, so you also, I mean, taste what they have gone through. I mean, when you have such incidents, and people want development to come to their, 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 to, uh, to their communities, they are, of course, uh, not, their, their consciousness is not such as to say, look, you know, this is gives your stock. Because any conscious person will tell you, look, you know, this is just mere political talk. But he cannot, because the, I mean, the, the development of the country, of one district, uh, the development of one district is inexorably intertwined with the development of other districts. So you cannot just isolate one community. Yeah. But I'm just giving you that as one instance. Yeah, what, what, what some people are saying is that a statement like that, only that statement, should not warrant you to say the entire election is free, is not free and fair. I'm giving you... And you have cited, you have gone far inside it that there was no free and fair election that has ever been won by President Jammeh's government. Some might be wondering, all the statements made by the AU, the, uh, the African Union's election observation during the last election, of course the National Youth Parliament and other youth-led organizations in the country who serve as independent electoral observers, all their conclusions as highlighted by the Independent Electoral Commission, where the election went free and fair. Well, well. That has, been, that has been their view. After all, they, the AU came into the country to observe the elections for two weeks. An election commenced with registration. It's not the voting. What they have commended is the voting. They would never condemn an election as being unfair unless there is violence. And we as Gambians from 1965, in fact, from 1960, now, we have been uh, very cautious, you know, we've been, we've restrained ourselves that, you know, we will not you know, throw this country into turmoil, we will not destabilize this country, you know, for what? For political office? At least my party believes in that. My party believes in that. I've always made the uh, uh, statement that, look, you know, even even a cock will not be killed except for ceremony. Okay, according to... So, according to so, so let, me, let, me, let me learn. So the AU, what they saw was the voting day. And, okay. in, fact, and in fact, let me tell you that uh, one of the elections, the, uh, the, the, AU, the, AU head, the AU was headed, delegation was headed by former uh, uh, foreign minister of Nigeria, 
and I condemn him because the statements he made when he went to the presidency, he was some of the gratitude and so forth. I mean, we just made me so see that there was something wrong. Okay, according to Seb Matijao, a former University of the Gambia political science lecturer, wrote in his recent article, Gambian Youth and Partisan Politics, Apathy or Resistance. He said, I am not very convinced that rigging of votes takes place in the Gambia. I observe the last elections and I have seen way of ballot box, the way ballot box are arranged and votes counted after words. Equally, the presence of party represent representatives makes it less likely for such to happen. Elections in the Gambia are lost and won during voter registration. What do you say about his statement? Well, I agree with it in part. I agree with it in part that uh, at registration, in fact, I did mention that, that elections commence with registration. And rigging, that's kind of rigging, that is, it takes place at election. Now, you will all agree that uh, usually when elections are approaching or registration are approaching, you have all sorts of festivals organized. And you have people coming from God knows from where. And Gambian, the, the, I mean, to, to access Gambian national identity, Gambian national document is the easiest thing. Passport, national identity card is the easiest thing to, 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 to access. And these are the basic things that are used to obscure voters' card. Someone who has never been to the Gambia can come in, speak fluent Mandinka, come in and say, look, I'm from Khartoum. You know, and uh, he gets a photo card. Somebody who speaks fluent Fula, from Guinea, two days ago, he comes. He says, look, I'm from, I'm from a Kuloro. You know, so in your, in your, in so, your opinion, so, in your so opinion, most of our national documents have been, have been altered or given to no, people that I, are not Gambians. I'm not, I'm not saying that they're altered, but you know, I say that, that people access and procure our national documents easily. Even though they are not Gambians? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, now let's go to this point. Absolutely. We have less time. Absolutely. Let, me, let, me just, let me just add one thing, just add one thing, you know, that the other the, um, criteria that is used to acquire, I mean, voter's card is the, is, the, is the birth certificate. After all, the birth certificate is just evidence of place of birth, not evidence of your nationality. So, but then, but then they are using it. This, but these are the things that are used. Oh, oh, oh. The statistics on voter apathy keeps on declining, especially at National Assembly election. For example, in 1997, 73.2%, 2002, 56.38%, 2007, 41.70%, and 2012, it has de declined for the worst, 19.44% respectively. Don't you think your party has a role to, has played a significant role in this um, downplay of people's participation in politics? Learn exactly the history behind UDP in terms of boycotting elections? Well, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know when, I don't know boycotting, when, when the boycotting is there, but you choose that one. Because whether, they have, whether I agree with you or not, you, know, you, you they, have chosen that they one. Have, they have mentioned your, in, 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 in this very article, your party has been specifically mentioned that UDP should be blamed largely for the low voter turnouts in 2007 and 2012 National Assembly and Local Government elections. I, I, I don't I don't I don't think that is a fair I think that I think that is a fair uh, uh, a fair comment. But do you regret let, 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 do you regret about it? Let, 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 what whether I regret or not, I I'll come to that, you know, I'll come to that. I don't think that I don't think that is a fair comment. Mm -hmm. in two thousand and eleven, it was in UDP alone that abstained. No, two thousand and seven and twelve. Yeah, 2012. Local, local government elections. That, that, that's a different one. That's what I'm saying. 2012. In 2011, it was only NRP that participated in that, the presidential election. Yeah, the rest that, that, boycotted. That, that, that is what I'm saying. That in 2012, it was not UDP alone that abstained from participating in national assembly elections. So the statement uh, making UDP responsible for the <laughs> voter apathy, I think, uh, I mean, I think it's not fair. You know? I mean, why, 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 why do you exclude PPP? Why do you exclude GMC? Why do you exclude DOI? Then they, they didn't take part in 2000, 2012 National Assembly elections. And 2007 National Assembly elections, we took part. We go to the history. I mean, I mean then, then, then Motsani became the minority leader. So it was not correct. 
Okay, so you disagree with this? No, factually, so factually, factually, factually is not correct. Okay. Now let's let's move to this point. Do you regret personally in relation to the voter apathy that we have been experiencing since um, year 2002? No. Well, well, regret in the sense that it's not enough something that should happen, but not regret in the sense that I have been responsible for it. Yeah, because you if said, say, if you, you said, if I may quote you, if I may quote your word, if I may quote your word, um, you said. Um, in 2000, and in, in, of course, in relation to this election, in your, in the second national congress of the United Democratic Party at, in LRR 2010, you said we boycotted the 2002 2000. national assembly election, right. a decision for which I took personally. Right. I regret the decision, which was influenced by my trust and confidence in a fellow party member. Yes, I, did, general, general I, did, I did say that. I did say that. Uh, I believe I, I believe it was an interview I gave after the Congress in summer. I did say that. I did say so. Okay. Um, what we will do now is we'll, we'll allow our audience to also ask questions in relation to um, the issues that we've been discussing since the, at the beginning of the program. But before going, uh, I have a few points that I want to um, uh, make clear. That is, um, are, are you? A socialist, or is it the United Democratic Party, a socialist party? No, <laughs> you know we are not put down by any ideology. Okay, that's good. But um, okay. you are very associated with socialist movement. Oh, it's socialist international, yes. But yeah. that doesn't yeah. mean that you are. You are. I, I mean, I mean, certainly, I mean, you know, I mean, you, uh, you, 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 do, you do not, you will not consider. United Kingdom has been operated as a socialist state, mm -hmm. and the Labour Party is a very prominent member of the Socialist International. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, the, the Conservative government has excluded itself entirely uh, uh, from uh, that. Uh, 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 yeah, but because what, 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 why I'm asking you this is because um, you said in, in that Congress um, we have established link with Socialist International and its youth association, the National Union of Socialist Youth. And I said, over the years, our officers have attended meetings of the parent body in observer status, which our youth have fully participated in the meetings of international socialist youth in Denmark, Cameroon, South Africa, to name a few. And you personally, of course, you delivered a paper in, on the topic, the influence of security on politics in, of West Africa, yes, in Mali, you know, in, in Mali, in Mali yes, you know, in, in, which is a socialist program. So yes. that's why I'm asking you this question. Yes. Yes. So this has nothing to do with your party. I mean, no, it's, no, our membership of what I'm saying that our membership of the Socialist International, you know, is not uh, uh, based, you know, on uh, having I mean, the uh, the ideology that people bandy about, you know, like uh, maybe. Uh, Venezuela, or maybe, uh, maybe, maybe like, maybe like Cuba. I mean, after all, Senegal has a party called the Party Socialist. You know? But that does not mean that you going to, as a government, you are going to operate on the basis of, social, I mean, quote unquote, socialism. We are part of that organization, but then that does not mean that you know we are taken out as a. Because well, sometimes when you talk of these things, you know, you, you've been divorced from uh, organizations and regimes that uh, govern or regulated by the known democratic norms. They think that, you know, they, everything you know, is um, uh, done in a manner that, according to maybe conservatives, would be unorthodox. And that is not the question. And as I said, you know, I mean, uh, like today, in the UK, the leader of the, Labour, of the Labour Party is probably one of the most outspoken, quote unquote, uh, socialist leaders. But then, Britain, if he becomes Prime Minister, Britain would not be run in the way that people think socialist states are run and are run and money. Okay, so now the floor is open. If anyone has a question, you can raise your hand and then. Mr. Lord, uh, Lord Dabo would be able to answer it. But before, before you know, going further to that, what I want to know is, this uh, 2016 presidential election is coming. What package do you have for government people? 
Well, the package that we have for Gambian people is a better society, a better Gambia, which entails good governance, which entails an energized economy. These are, these are basic things that you have to have. An, an economy that is energized and they have good governance. Okay, so do, so do you, do you what, what is your opinion on the Vision 2016 um, policy? I've gone through your manifesto 1996 and the recent one. And I feel that some one of the one of the areas that you know have caught my mind most is the agriculture, the sector of agriculture. Um, do you think the area of agriculture is something that you need to work on hard? Looking at what the current government is doing in terms of um, taking agriculture to another level, the Vision 2016 policy alone is something that is sufficient to many people. And of course, um, the investment that they are doing in the area of agriculture, back to the land, and then you know, other issues in agriculture. Do you think that is not a settled area that GDP just can just close over and focus on other important areas? Well, well, see, in a country like Gambia, agriculture can never be closed area because that's the means of our economy. It can never be closed area. You have to do things to improve on what exists. Otherwise, if you remain static, then you'll be overtaken. But let me say this, I had said it on, uh, on occasions that we reiterated that uh, uh, Vision 2016, uh, if anyone says it's not a good vision, they are mistaken. I have always doubted its practicability. Look, within one year, it is not, sufficient, it is not possible to make Gambia food self-sufficient. It's a dream. And the back to land, really, if you tell Gambia go back, go back to the land, you are just telling them that, look, this is what you know. You've been born into a country that, is, that, that uh, depends on agriculture. So but but you believe, you believe, you believe that Vision 2060 is a poly, good policy? It, 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 I mean, who would, who would contest the fact that no, the government should not pursue okay, the time. policy of food self-sufficiency? It would only be a madman. Good. And I have, I have always commented, but I have always said that, look, it was a dream. In fact, it was not properly, it was not properly, I mean, uh, thought out. You know, I mean, this, I mean, you have to have your technicians, your experts. You know, you have to look at various things, the vagaries of the weather, of the climate. You have to look at factors that could impede the achievement of the vision and make your plan for it. In fact, you stagger it. You know, I wouldn't have said vision 2016, I would have given it maybe 15 years and say, you know, for the first five years, we are going to produce so many tonnage of rice, goose, feed and so forth. And then, you know, you increase your production. And then to reach your target, what you cannot do, I mean, who is just like, you know, I mean, giving birth to a baby and then start working, it's impossible. According to, according to Minister Abdu, Abdu Koli, the Minister of Finance, in his budget speech, he said the total production of, for the 2015 cropping season is estimated at 284.853 metric tons, which represented 10%, 10%. Compared to 2014, production of 256.898 metric tons, a great improvement, isn't it? So well, yeah, this well, 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 yeah, well, 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 20, I mean, after 26 years and that, no, no, it's not 20, it's not end of 26, it was, it, it, it was, uh, it was, uh, the, the target was that, that 2015, end of 2015, 31st December 2015, there will be no importation of rice. No, no, that, that, and now it's to September 2016. So that, so the division is that, 1st of January 2016, Gambia will be full. full, 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 full. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now let's go to our, our audience, our wonderful audience. Maybe you can, you can stand up and ask the question. Honorable uh, lawyer Usir uh, Dabo, many Gambia, we are already in 2016 and we have about 11 months.
to the elections on December 1st, 2016. We've seen the APRC government winning elections from 2006 to 11. Now we are in the election year. My question to you is, do you, is it going to be business as usual as some Gambians might think? Or are you seeing a game changer? Are we going to see something different? If you think so, what do you think are the signs or what are the possible game changers for this coming presidential election? Good. Well, uh, uh, when it comes to uh, matters of politics, you know, I am always very optimistic. I am a rationalist. I live on hope and I'm very, very optimistic. And uh, uh, my optimism, you know, pushes me, you know, gives me the drive. You know? And uh, uh, honestly, I believe that uh, uh, the situation in the Gambia is such that every Gambian, every Gambian now wants a change. I have said it uh, in order for us uh, that uh, it is the duty of each and every one of us to tell our friends, to tell our uncles, to tell our brothers that look, there is need for change. And you can only achieve that change through the ballot box, legitimately through the ballot box. And I encourage everyone to have confidence in the ballot box and depose your hope in the ballot box and not any extra legal way because it is, uh, it, is it has its deficits. Yeah. I strongly believe it. Look, uh, two years ago, nobody from the Green Youth will mount um, the podium of an opposition party and say that I am Green Youth, I abandon it. And I have come with so many people. Two years ago, nobody, nobody dare do that. But Gambians have reached a point when they realize that, look, you know, if we cannot do it the Yaya Yame way, we will now have to take our stand. And they are taking their stand. And I am very optimistic that 2016 will not be like other election years. But, but I if, I may, if I may put this question, if I may you know, sub sub substitute it with this, 2016 would be a question of difference. But still now we have, people are saying that they have not seen any sign in the opposition when it comes to terms of, you know, forming a coalition to make one leader to challenge the incumbent. Is there any possibility? Uh, there is a possibility. There is absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm not even talking of possibility, I'm talking of probability. A coalition? I'm, I'm talking of probability because things that can be possible here, they are not probable. You know? let, me just, let me just say, you know, uh, uh, yesterday I was on another medium and I said this, that look, we have taken steps that is very monumental. In previous years, you've never seen the opposition parties in this country get together and say, look, we have to look at the laws of this country that govern the local process and do something about it. It has never happened. Each party goes its own way. UDP will say, look, you know, look at this section of the, of, of the election stuff. It's bad, it's this, it's that, and that is it. They would do the same thing. PPP would do, and then, you know, but this year, or, or this past uh, months, the person have got together. And but, but the problem and is... View, and put, let, let me, let me learn, and put their views together. You know, which I believe is a very, very important step. It has given us, I mean, like we have, we've, been, we've discussed those issues for about maybe two or three months. Yeah, but the problem is, got whenever the opposition comes come together, they become more divided than united. For instance, for example, in 2006 presidential election, the NAD was formed. Everyone thought that, you know, something was going to be, you know, successful on the side of the opposition. But at the end of the day, everything collapsed. In the, in, in, in the uh, recent elec uh, uh, election as well, the United Front, all the parties that came together ended up dividing. The, so is that a good sign? You are absolutely, you, uh, you, you are, you are absolutely right. The, uh, I don't want to get into history about some of these things because I am, let me say this, you know, I have to keep it up on myself 
to coordinate activities of the prison practice and uh, I should be uh, very careful in what I say so that I do not throw spanners in the works. You know? But then, 2006, failure of NAD, when people write the history without distortions, we come to find that NAD probably started on a wrong footing. Okay. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to go because, because there are people, I mean, who uh, we are part of NAD and we are trying to get okay. them together. Let's take another question. To Let's take another question. Uh, my question is: um, many political analysts um, begin to say that Raya Dabo is not a, polit a, senior, a serious political um, contestant when it comes to 2016 presidential elections. The reason being is why. Is it still 2016, barely or less than 12 months to the presidential election, and the United Democratic Party is not able to produce the standard bearer for the United Democratic Party? Okay, good. But we are concentrating on, rather concentrating on the age limit, the, constitution, the constitutionality of um, the Adabo beans. Um, coming in to stand as the presidential candidate for the United Party in the 20, 2016 presidential election. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, so, so the make of that, about the issue of, you only focus on the age, age limit of the United Democratic Party, but when it comes to the real issues, as he highlighted, it's barely discussed. I, I, I agree uh, that uh, people have been saying that, and uh, obviously, uh, uh, the United Democratic Party uh, has candidates or candidates in mind, but again, uh, there are talks of coming having a United Front. Would it be prudent for us to say, "Look, like, this is our candidate"? What, what is no, let, let me, our part? What is stopping you from no, no, your party, no, no, your leader? No, no, this no, is our your that, that this is our candidate. When in fact, maybe there are other parties who are thinking of other modalities of a United Front. Because as I said, I am trying to coordinate these things and I don't want to do anything that will really throw standards in the works. But uh, let me say that uh, we intend to hold our Congress very soon. And of course, the Congress is not going to select the, 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 the flag bearer. The, press, the Congress selects only the leader of the party, which is quite different from the presidential candidate. And uh, uh, we believe that uh, uh, what people are in haste for, after all, they will, they will soon, they, 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 they will get it very, very soon. But one thing that puzzles me, why isn't anybody asking who is the candidate for Doi? Why is anybody as to who is the candidate for other? No, but well, like, quite frankly, yeah, quite but frankly, there is a party. There is a, there is, there is a party. There is a party that has that has always there has there is a change when it comes to the leadership between Halifa Sala and that of Sidi Jara. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that a little bit democratic? But the rest of the party, yeah, the rest yeah. of the other parties in the country, yeah. is only one figure. Yeah, Why? Yeah. No, no, I. I I, 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 I mean, I, 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 I disagree. I, I, I disagree, and that is because, because, because Syria, Syria has reached the disqualifying constitutional age. After all, in 1996, did he contest? Did he contest in 1996? He did. He did, and in 2001. He did. He did. But so, so because no, let, let me let, so because he also. Have we the, I mean, uh, the, the, I mean, the, 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 the constitutional, I mean, somebody used caveat, you know, because he was caught by, I believe, caught by the caveat, so, I mean, couldn't contest. Yeah, but the point is, the point is, all of the PDIs, that's the, uh, the PDIs party, at least for them, what some are saying, they are more democratic than any other parties in the country, because their leadership is changeable. The so candidates, you are times, talking, you are talking, of, you are talking of, you are talking of candidates. Yes. You are talking of candidates. Yes, candidate. yeah, you are talking of candidates, which, which is different from the leader. You are talking of candidates. Yeah, we are talking about the candidates. Yeah, you are talking about the candidates. Okay. Yeah. So let's see whether we can have another question. Yes. Um, can you stand up? My question goes to, is in relation to the youth. Knowing very well that 
we constitute 67, 65 to 67% of the population. And demographically, we are also the active working population of any, any, any nation, any economically thriving nation. And it is sad enough to see the, the level of the kind of the, 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 the level of misery, so I call it misery, that is befalling our youth now. Coming to unemployment, the issue of unemployment among them, the issue of improvised immigration and the high the, the high rate of ignorance yeah. and the question. Skill job among them and all that. And you will also realize that this this youth their participation in in national politics we all is evident that is is is, is next to nothing. And that is don't you think that is not as a result of the the way and the manner in which political parties, you know, approach politics in the Gambia so that youths are being marginalized from, from the political circle and as a result of which they are their voice is not heard since they are removed from the active from the active from the from the active involvement in, in our national approach. Well, uh, I do not think that, uh, at least let me stop speaking for UDP, I do not think that UDP uh, has excluded youths from participating in the uh, political life of the country. In fact, that is why we even have a youth wing of the, of the party. Uh, it is a, a matter of great concern to me personally that uh, I see the use of this country you know, are rather apolitical. They are not interested in the affairs, in the political life of this country. They are satisfied being called the future leaders, but yet not willing to do what future leaders will be doing. <coughs> when, uh, and in my private conversation with the, not with the speaker of the National Youth Parliament, I said, look, you know, there is vast potential in the use of this country that I want to see the use of this country take active role in the political life of this country. They should not just be GR leaders. They should not just be agents for I mean, uh, political parties. They should not be just pawns in the hands of power, in the hands, in the hands of party leaders. They should be there. They should have the participants, they should contest for the elective offices. But what is sad is that you find a great number of youths in this country, they are dissatisfied, probably they are dissatisfied with the situation. They say it privately, but then how it should be brought to an end, they know how to do it, but yet they don't want to take part in it. You find a lot of youths. They don't want to be seen publicly flirting with the opposition because they fear that something might happen to them. But the system that instills that fear in you, it is that system that you have to wage war against. It is that system that you have to disturb, overthrow it, and enthrone a system that will treat you as a worthy citizen. I think the use of this country has a lot I mean, I mean, of vast potential and it is for them to make use of it. I, um, you, look at it you, look, you look at the local government I mean, institutions, the, I mean, the, the local councils, the young, the young people that you have there, uh, you can hardly call I mean, educated. In the National Assembly, you don't have any use in National Assembly. You just have I mean, uh, what they, they, they have been handpicked. They have dead in contest. And I'm asking you, not to be handpicked, because when you are handpicked, you are at the mercy of the person who has nominated you. Then you are like so, so, so it is absolutely necessary. Honestly, you know, I, I told the speaker that look, you know, my children are, are disappointing me. Why are they disappointing you? Because they are not taking part in the political life of the country. And this they should do. For, for, their, for their country. Look, why? Look, I am, you know, 
Let me tell you this. I came in in 1996 because I thought I was just going to be, you know, uh, a transitional person because I'm so interested in my law. I thought I should go back and practice my law. Well, I want to have, if you have, you know, young, determined youths, fairly educated, yeah, you just pass the pattern to them. What many young people are complaining is that it's like a blame game now. The, the old generation is saying, of course, these young people don't want to be part of the political trade. The young people are saying, no, the old people are not allowing us, are not giving us the opportunity to be part of the political trade. But that, that, that is not UDP. So that's a different opportunity. That, 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 is, not, that is not UDP. Okay. That so is not UDP. And then we have our door open to the use of this country. Let them come and take over the leadership of the, of, of the party and run the party the way we want and then take over the leadership of the government and run the government of the day, the way they want it. That is not UDP. Okay. 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 That is not UDP. Question. Thank you, Mr. Dabo, for this time that he's having with us here. Well, you've mentioned of a uh, possibility of UDP having a female candidate to stand for the presidency. It's to my knowledge that none of the political parties have ever chosen a female candidate to stand for the presidency. And since the Gambia has been declared Islamic State, do you foresee the Gambia of having a female president someday in the near future? Well. Uh, well, we, we, that is why it is not taught, because we see that, that uh, uh, Gambia, that, that it is right for Gambia to have a female president. Time is right. I mean, after all, you know, we are moving with times, and the female president being uh, elected is not, I mean, cannot be something that is free to the Gambia. Now, as far as Islamic State is concerned, I think that was uh, one of the big political jokes. Really, I mean, uh, uh, Mr. President. A, a deep political joke after ordering civil servants to cover up their head? Well, well, I'm, hap I'm, hap I'm, hap I'm happy that he is in there. But the current government is very serious about the Islamic State. Mr. Fati, you see, it seems that, you know, this uh, statement is so serious, and then what followed? you know, really had uh, prepared some of us to do certain things that would really, I mean, uh, be very embarrassing to him. I like how? We will we are, we are just go under section, under section 20, uh, under, under section 5 and section I mean, 127 of the Constitution. And the Gambia cannot be declared as an Islamic state? It, it cannot, it, in fact, in fact it, it, has, it has absolutely no effect, it has absolutely no legal effect. And the attempt to make it a de facto Islamic State is what was being attempted to say that you must cover your head. And if that had not been rescinded, we are going to take the matter, we are going to, take the matter to court. But still now, we, there is, there, there Gambia is, no, is called the Re Islamic Republic. No, calling, calling it Islam, is, is Islamic Republic, does it make it an Islamic yes, Republic? You call you, I mean, you, I, mean I call you, you know, al call of Bansan, or that means an al call of Bansan. <laughs> No, 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 quite frankly, no. So in your opinion, that's a political joke? No, it's, um, honest, honestly, honest, honestly, but then, you know, it's a political joke for, for me, it's a political joke, but then, you know, Mr. President does not know the ramifications of this internationally. Internationally, he doesn't, I mean, he's not, if, he, if he's aware, then he must be oblivious as to the, the international implications of this. And uh, uh, I, I, I am... I am, I am very, I am very, I am very, I'm very hopeful that uh, uh, it will just remain as it is. I mean, uh, I see that uh, the uh, other, other faiths, you know, are uh, practicing their religion the way they have always been, no interference. And of course, you know, in an Islamic state, you know, in an Islamic state, you won't have, I mean, uh, churches operating in an Islamic state. You won't have, I mean, uh, I mean, beauty pageant. I mean, the Islamic State was declared that a few days after you have young school girls um, who have just left school, you know, parading themselves on stages, showing their beauty. Is that what you have in the Islamic State? And should that be what any president really? I mean, for me, for me, it's an abuse of those girls. How, how is it an abuse of those girls? How can you expose 
such young girls, you know, all of them probably below the age of 21 years, you know, you parade them on the on stage, showing their beauty, you know, and so forth, all in the name of raising funds for what? As July 27th, what? But those guys are consented. Mister, Mister, consent by those girls, for them they could really understand the very implications of what they were doing. Okay. You know, do they? You know, I mean, you cry that the president wants you girls over there, you know, and then come put nice words into your ears. You know, I mean, I do not think that uh, any uh, head of state should really. Uh, be party to such things. I mean, I'm not against beauty. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I mean uh, beauty contest. I'm not against them, you know. But I'm against the president, any president, using it, you know, as a means of uh, saying, you know, you want to raise funds for certain activities. But, I mean scholarship, I mean, but the, the government should think of a better way of, raise, of, I mean, of getting funds. But money is better to for, money. Of, 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 the government should think of better ways of raising funds to make scholarship available to our school, to our girls, rather than, I mean, exposing their duty. <coughs> After all, we are, we are some of them, we are some of those. Let, let, me, let, let, me just, let me just tell you this, Mr. Fadi. We are some of them not... I mean, taken in, I mean, uh, in wedlock after having participated in those, uh, I mean, in those activities, and then someone finds that you know quite beautiful, then I have to have as a wife. I mean, should those things happen? I mean, come on, come on, come on. So, are you against beauty pageant? I'm against using school girls. But you are in support of beauty pageant. But I'm against, school girls. I'm against school girls. Okay. Being taken part in beauty pageant. I, I think that is clear. But before we go, um, I have a personal question. That is. Um, looking at declaring Gambia as an Islamic state, do you think there is any validity in relation to Gambia, call, people calling Gambia a secular republic, section 1, after this Ken St. James case? Sorry? I said, calling Gambia as, Gambia being declared as an Islamic republic, do you think there is any validity again talking about section 1, Gambia being a secular republic? Well, well there is a lot of validity to talk about it because you are trying to gentleman's attention to the fact that the very constitution that you have sworn to defend, you are violating it. Because this is what section 1 says. So there's a great deal of validity. And we should continue to say it. So that not only that provision, but other provisions of the constitution and other laws, you must respect. Okay. Thank you so much. This is all what we have for you for this edition of the Institute's platform. Till next week, bye-bye.